Hi, people. Let's see, did I get this right? The webinar is now live recording. All right, so we're on. This is my first time ever doing a Zoom uh, workshop of any sort. So I have been on family Zoom calls, but I'm usually not the one at the controls. So uh, bear with me if there's any technical difficulties. Uh, so I'm going to just kind of wait a little bit for people to get uh, to join. I see Tessie. Hi. I see a little hand. See, I don't know all this stuff. I don't know what the, like, what I'm, am I supposed to press something? I don't know if I can see how many people are in or not. Oh, I see. Okay. So, right. Hi, Maria. Uh, just give a couple minutes for people to sign on. And um, hopefully this will be an easy technological feat. Um, in the meantime, what you see me doing is pinning a, uh, an apron like the one I'm wearing, because that's what I'm going to paint today. I'm going to paint uh, an apron and also I also have a canvas tote bag, which I will paint as well. So. Um, I'm just going to continue setting it up for a couple minutes, and that'll give people a chance, I think, to get on and, uh, and to join us. So hopefully you guys are inspired and you like painting today. Even if you don't have your supplies, this, uh, this webinar or this Zoom call is going to be posted at a later date. Uh, there will be some information online. I have a bad memory and she didn't tell me when it would be posted and I don't remember. Um, but uh, anyways, it will be posted, rest assured, and we will make that link public, but it won't be right away. I think, it, I think she said it in a month or so from now. So, um, yeah, so here we go. I've got this one prepared. Uh, what I did is I took my nice apron which is a canvas, cotton canvas. It helps to paint on cotton rather than on any kind of um, polyester or anything uh, man-made because the cotton absorbs the, the paint, the color of it. It might bleed a little bit too. So uh, as you can see, I have it on a piece of cardboard. You're seeing a little bit of sheen here. That's because I taped uh, a plastic bag onto the cardboard and the reason for that is so that the paint when I paint on the, the canvas and it bleeds through it doesn't and when it dries the, 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 the paper doesn't stick to the cardboard it'll peel right off if it's if there's a layer of plastic so um yeah here we go here's my apron which I will have fun painting in just a minute um I guess I could also do a little intro here. Um, the reason we're doing this workshop is uh, with anthropology is uh, because anthropology is honoring uh, makers and designers and visionaries around the globe, including me. So uh, it's very nice to be considered among that group of people. Um, International Artist Day is actually tomorrow. So that'll be October 25th. And uh, we're just celebrating it a day early. And uh, anthropology is asking people to support artists in your area. Go to, uh, if there are any art shows online, or visit their websites. Because now, of course, being uh, uh, in the middle of a pandemic, we don't want to encourage people to, uh, to, to spread the virus by uh, visiting too closely. So anyways, um, that aside, uh, just try to support your local artists is the message. Um, anthropology has supported me over the last year, uh, starting in spring 2019. They gave me an exhibition at Gallery 543. I always get the numbers wrong. I think it's Gallery 543, at, which is in their, on their campus in Philadelphia, in their head office. They have a campus with a number of buildings, and uh, the gallery is uh, it, it's essentially this giant hall, and it's a wonderful space with tall, tall ceilings. And when you look down the hallway at the very end, there's the cafeteria, the eating space, 
and there's this big giant ship that is parked there. It's in a naval yard, so it's a really fantastic, inspiring space to visit. Um, so that was in the spring, and then in December, they sent me and uh, three other artists to Miami Art Basel, and what we did is we had a makeshift studio in the hotel that we stayed in, in Miami, and uh, the four of us created, uh, well, we painted onto uh, furniture and uh, dishes and glasses and it really whatever, like all kinds of home products from anthropology. And uh, then we had a pop-up studio, or I should say rather a gallery in the design district. And we sold the, uh, all the pieces that we made and the money went to Young Arts Foundation, a charity to promote arts within, uh, within the States to, um, well, stumbling over all my words here, uh, to keep young people uh, interested in the arts and further their artistic endeavors. So, and the money that you spent, the $5 you spent on this webinar is also that too. It's going to Young Arts as well. Um, so that was in December. We did the Miami Art Basel in January. They uh, sent, they, we launched a whole lot of products. If you go on to anthropology.com and you search my name, Claire Desjardins, uh, you'll find a number of products available even right now uh, that are, uh, that I collaborated on with anthropology. So that was kind of fun. And uh, it was a whole, um, publicity about that and they did promotions and stuff. So but they really got my name out there. It was a real honor to work with them. Uh, in February, they sent me to Newport Beach in California, where I led my last in-person workshop. We were also painting tote bags and, uh, well, actually not either, it's just tote bags there. So, uh, so this is another version of that same workshop where we were going to paint a tote bag. And um, that's the plan for today. <laughs> uh, I know that some of you have already texted me and said that you are, don't have tote bags or, or aprons, but that you actually have canvas bags. And that's perfectly fine. You can, I mean, that you have canvases. Uh, you can paint on whatever surface you need to. Uh, if you, you could paint on a pillow slip, I mean, that would work too. It might be a little rough, the paint, um, on your cheek, but uh, it might look nice. So it's, it, it, there are no rules, just have fun. Uh, that's the goal of this workshop. Um, you know, I, I'm, I, I feel like uh, that's what I do with my art in general, when I'm painting paintings. Uh, you know, I, I'm really not sending out any kind of messages. Uh, it, about uh, political things or anything like that, I am really uh, just spreading hopefully joy to people. So um, anyways, without further ado, I'm going to start talking about the painting because I don't want to bore you with too many details. So that's my big intro. I'll let you know about my setup here. Uh, I have, as you can see behind me, I have uh, a lot of acrylic paints. Uh, in my studio here, I have uh, the hard body paints. I have uh, fluid and uh, liquid acrylics here. So uh, those are what I will use. Um, because I'm painting on fabric, though, I am going to mix one other product. And uh, I bought these little pots. I did pre-mix a whole bunch of colors. Um, never enough, of course, because I always want more. But uh, uh, I'm going to mix one other one other pot. I, I'm still missing some colors. I left a few pots empty too because sometimes it's nice to mix with existing colors. It tends to soften the um, the, the composition if you use colors that are uh, that contain each other in them. So I'm just going to step out of frame for one second because I left all my extra cups on the side. Uh, 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 uh. I come back. Okay, so what I'll do is show you how I mix the fabric paint. Those of you who are painting on a canvas can skip the uh, this part, but those of you who are not, who are using uh, a fabric, might want to know about this. You can also just paint directly. The thing is, it uh, it will set. 
if you use this, uh, it's called GAC 900. Um, I'll show you here. See, there you go. It's made by Golden. And this, if you heat set it afterwards, will uh, make the, the paint really uh, stay in the fabric. I'm not really expressing this very well, but. Um, 
I'm telling you everything that I have here because one of the things I have are pots of water, okay? So I only put about this much water in each pot and I like to keep a pot for each color. So in other words, I have a navy blue brush. I will put it in a pot of water, which now that water is very, let's see if you can see that. See that, it's navy blue water. Um, the advantage to having different pots for different colors is that your colors don't get muddy as quickly. They do get muddy eventually. And also you can use the, the water later as a wash. Um, so yeah, that's kind of fun. Um, and you can reuse the brushes without having to go to the sink each time. I'm just going to close up a little blue, maybe blue pot. And I think something that could be fun, let me grab this out, is to use some water on that. So here, I'm going to pull this up so that you can see. Oh, I like the spray to be kind of uh, misty. Here it's actually really sharp. similar in, in the paint color that I use, I can mix those in the same waters. So if I have a turquoise and a sky blue they brush, they can both go together in the same water. Okay, so here, you see what I did. This is the part that was wet. And you can see the effect I got. It's like a watercolor. And here it's dripping. So, yeah, I'll just keep painting. So I'm going to do a few, a little bit on this side, I think. I think it would be fun. Maybe I'll introduce some red. Or, mm, no, that nice limey green that I did when you were, when you joined me. I think that's a really beautiful color. Um, because the pots are small, I'm not using my big paint brushes, but if I had a bigger pot, I would probably use the bigger paint brushes. Let's 
nice lime green. Oh, it's a beautiful color. It's a happy color. That's what I like. My painting really, um, for me, is a form of therapy in a sense. It kind of is what keeps me sane. And I think especially during COVID, you know, it's um, something that I've been able to um, go to and it's, you know, it's consistent. It's not, it, it's, it's always there is what I mean to say. So it's there for me, if that makes sense. And I can go into my own world and enjoy it and get lost a little bit and forget about all the troubles of the world. It's really nice to be able to do that. As I'm sure that many of you can attest to. Um, I want to keep holding it up in between layers so that you can see. I think what I'll go for next. Oh, you see, as it's getting, because it's wet, it's um, the cotton is shrinking a little bit. So it's pulling on my canvas. I'm going to just. Uh, make sure that I keep it nice and smooth and tight so that I can keep painting. And uh, I'm gonna add something really fun, some hot pink. And not too much, but this is much thicker or the consistency. It was a different paint company that I used for this particular color. Let's see. So yeah, this is uh, starting to look very Miami. Brings me back to my time there in, in Art Basel. It's such a nice time. The other artists are worth looking up, by the way, the artists who were there. One is Bernice Kelly. She is a, Sunder, a, a, Sunday, a Sunday painter on Instagram, I think it is. And uh, then there's uh, Florence Balducci in Paris, or in France, rather. She's not in Paris. She's in a small town in France. And uh, Susan Maddox, who is Hawaiian, but lives in Southern California. All three very different artists. And I'm, you know, the, the four of us together, it was like magic. It was an amazing experience. So here you go. See, and I could keep going and going. Um, I might just let it dry a little bit so that the next layer doesn't always bleed out or bleed into. Um, I actually don't mind a little bit of the bleeding into. I think it's very beautiful. Like, um, here you go. Look at this area. Like the pink is bleeding into the sky blue and here also. You know that there's something that happens it's a bit magical um also here look at this i like to look at different parts of my paintings uh, i think it's what draws me in i think it's what draws other people in. so i'm going to leave this for now i'm going to put it aside and put it over behind me and then i'm going to start working on the bag. So here, I wanted to show you what I did. It's just a regular piece of cardboard that I had cut up from a box. And again, I put the plastic on it so that it doesn't, uh, the, this canvas doesn't stick to my box, my cardboard. It's much easier to paint on a firm surface, I find. So what I'm gonna do is just quickly tape the bag to the cardboard. It's just a regular grocery store bag. I'll fold it so that it's nice and snug. It's not perfect, but it'll do. It's just for a just for a chunk bag. So then I'm gonna take it. You see how it's? Uh, I didn't leave it flapping around anyway. It's nice and snug. Like it's wrapped like a present. 
And then I'm going to take this and I'm going to put it into my tote bag. Okay, it's got a rounded corner, so I can't really quite get right to the bottom, but that's okay. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to make this side snug. How am I going to do that? I'll do it with close pegs. So, um, pegs off there, falling off my head. Okay, so I've got some nice close pegs here. I will just wrap this around. One, two, three, four. And then I think, hmm, what will I do with the back side? I'll stick this strap in here, and I don't really want this front strap flapping around the front, uh, in front of my painting. So I'm going to, as well, use close pegs to pull that back. So here we go. It is flapping around in the back, but that's okay. I'll just be careful. Um, if it goes on the side, I guess it'll get paint on the side and maybe it'll look nice. So that's, that's nice. so a lot of what I do is serendipitous. So things that just happen on the, on, as I go. Um, but I have a nice smooth surface to paint on now. So uh, let's try something different. Um, I'm gonna use the magenta. I made this gorgeous magenta paint. Um, give it a little shake first. See how I'm doing for time? Okay. And what I'm going to do is actually just pour a little bit. See? Oops, scoop that out with my finger. Probably should be wearing gloves doing this. Um, the reason I did that is because I desperately want to show you using a big fat brush. And uh, do do do. People want to have fun with it. The canvas tends to absorb the paint and the water. I'm actually going to spray this with water because I do love that flowy effect. It's noisy, isn't it? Let's shake some of that water off. I can hold it and as I spray it, the water obviously is going in the direction of gravity. Uh, of course, now I've got a great big purple uh, puddle under there, which means that if I put this down, it's going to get purple as well. It will become purple. Um, I think I'm just going to live with that, though. Maybe what I'll do is I'll later paint the other side, and I just won't worry about it, will I? So there. Uh, I love that. Uh, let's try. I've got a really pretty, uh, it's like a, almost like a pale periwinkle blue. So that's a, one of my favorite colors. I can't really hold it towards, well, here, I can hold this towards the camera. You can see the color. It's beautiful, isn't it? Right, that. Look, I can spray sprinkle my color on it. Ooh, I kind of like that. A lot of different techniques you can use. You can also take your brush, load your brush up, and spray it. The only thing is if you're doing that, you might want to be careful about the walls around you, especially if you're not doing this in an art studio. If you're doing it in a makeshift kitchen studio or something like that, you may end up with splatter on the wall. So you could do a Jackson Pollock kind of design. Um, since I love navy blue, and I, I love navy blue with, um, with these colors. I'm going to use a little bit of that. Oh yeah, see I left my brush out, which is not a great idea because uh, acrylics dry very quickly. So I'm going to have a purple water right here. And you can't see this off camera, but there's a purple water there. Um, let's see, maybe I'm going to try a slightly skinnier brush. So this one is, uh, I don't know what the mousse is. I don't know what the glasses is on there. It's a smaller brush. It's about the thickness, less than the thickness of my thumb. So maybe I'm going to just do happy little shapes. Oops, let's 
starting to look like a little animal in there because that some of the water splattered so that looks like an eye on a seahorse was not intended. Um, in fact, now that I see it, I have to undo it because that's one of my rules is that I don't like to actually see a thing in my paintings. So let's see. <laughs> Patterns, they can be interesting also. Dots. And I always think that they're more interesting if they're not perfect. So don't worry about making things too clean and too neat. Go for the mess. Allow yourself to be free and creative. And uh, I think you'll find you'll have more fun that way. And the other thing is. Like I said, the goal here is to have fun. Um, but some people will, even though they, they want to do it to have fun, they want to have fun and do a great job and make something that's perfect. But don't, don't put that pressure on yourself. Just allow the process to take you where it's going to go. And I think you'll find that you end up in uh, some interesting places. Uh, I will add a little bit more, I'll put some yellow things. Yellow and purple are opposite colors. So, Sometimes that what that what can happen when you put a little bit of an opposite color somewhere in your painting, um, it just makes the it, it makes the colors pop a little bit. People always ask me, what do I do to make my colors pop? Well, that is one of my things that I like to do. Um, if you don't know what opposite colors are, be sure to Google them. Um, another thing I like to do is I like to put so far as colors, I like to put colors that are in the same family together. Same family, but not the same. So, for example, I might put uh, you know, two greens together, like these two colors. Can you see that there's like a yellowy green and a, a Kelly green? On its own, I find this is a bit hard sometimes. But if you put it next to a yellowy green, all of a sudden, it does something else. It becomes softer. So here's what I've got so far. Oops. And uh, that's my tote bag so far. I might add a couple more colors just for fun since uh, I'm getting into it. Uh, and let's see, a little bit of red, maybe. Uh, good thing I'm wearing an uh, because this apron is going to be painted by my hands, be finger painted, which is another technique actually I have I have used in the past is finger painting. When I used to give in person uh, workshops, I used to do a, a demonstration where part of it was in fact finger painting. I know it's something that you know we did as kids, but it also can look really beautiful too. I'm going to keep it. Uh, let's see, just a little bit of that, not too much. Yeah. Sometimes it doesn't take a lot of color. Sometimes it just takes a suggestion a little bit. And that's how it, it takes you a lot further to have a little bit than to have a lot necessarily. I also leave space. I leave. I like to leave a bit of white space. I find that makes the painting breathe a little better. There's an artist whose work I love, and uh, her, her Instagram name is Zebra Debra. And I, she, uh, she's from Stockholm, and she has she has these beautiful fluid works. You could look her up as well. Another really good artist. Um, let's see. I feel like this needs to try a little bit. Let's see how that uh, apron is doing. I'm gonna bring my apron back and I'll just trade it for my tote bag. You can see this is starting, the, the cotton is starting to uh, get tighter because it got wet. So I'm gonna actually loosen it so that my board is flat. I'm just undoing the both legs. A little bit so that the yeah, so this can flatten it a bit. Put them back on. When 
if you're painting on a, a, a canvas, like a stretched canvas, sometimes they can get a little bit billowy, what I call billowy. They're, uh, you know, they, get, they're, they lose their tight, their tautness. And uh, what you can do when that happens is spray it on the back side with some water. I use a spray bottle and, a, and maybe a sponge to move the water around. And you'll notice that the cotton will seize up and it gets tighter again. So that was, I was just reminded of that. Yes. Um, okay, let's get that clear there. Let's see. Maybe I was talking about putting the two greens together, so maybe I'm going to try that. Yet. Um, I did look at the little messy as they were. Uh, okay, I need a green brush. I'm going to try with the round brush. I'm not terribly concerned about staying in the lines or anything too normal like that. I do love this green floor. Oh, it's nice. It's a new guy called Aaron Hoey. And this, I always call this green Aaron Hoey green because he used to love this green in everything. Like, but just a pop of it, he'd say. So it's, in my mind, that's what I call it. You might have names for it certain colors because of associations you make with them. So here we have a green pot, green water. Um, I like to put lots of different colors. Oh, I know what else I would like to show you. I would like to mix some colors. Here, I've got an empty container. I'm going to take the green I just used, in fact, see if I can pour it that made me a terrible mess on the table. Oops. Okay, here we go. I managed. And then I'm going to add another color. As you recall, when we first started talking, um, I said that sometimes it's nice to mix colors that are already in a painting to get, like, you get two colors together, you mix them, and you get a third color, which I think is really nice. I'm going to mix, I'm mixing the Kelly green or the Aaron Kelly green and the yellow green. And I may add some white, but I'm going to, before I do that, I'm going to shake this together to see the mad scientist. It's not as different from the original Kelly green. I think there's a lot more Kelly green than there was of the yellow. I'm going to add some white. I want it to be different enough. Okay. It'll be more of a mint green. Um, when I'm painting, I usually use quite a bit of white. It um, lightens up the painting nicely. Oh, oh I need to really shake this. So I think the difference is going to be subtle because I put quite a bit of the Kelly green in here. But there's a difference. I can see it already. Mm. Okay, so here are the two colors I mixed. I added some white and I ended up with this. So do you see? Together, they kind of work together. Then I'm going to use the brush I use that's sitting in the green water. Uh, I'm going to use that to apply this paint. Fine. Hmm. Excuse me. 
see this. I do believe this is intended for people who work with clay. What it is, is a like a pallet knife, except that it's made of rubber. So that's kind of a fun tool to use to spread paint on and you can use hard body paint for this too. It will create a texture which is harder to wear as clothing. So you might want to take that into consideration. But if you're just experimenting and you're not worried, um, why not? Um, let's see. Oh, I have to look at the red of your net. Let's see. I'm trying to keep my colors, rather than painting on top of the colors, I'm trying to paint in areas that haven't yet been painted on. Because the paints are wet, if I were to put the red on top of the green or the blue, it would muddy up those colors. So because I'd like to keep my colors quite pure, I'm going to just, uh, I think, just find some places where there is no paint. It's just the canvas stuff. But that's okay because it's something I can um, play with. And I can do other things too. Um, I will add, I do have this like very pale pink. I'm going to add a bit of that. I'm going to use my pink brush that I used for my uh, fluorescent pink earlier. And this, you know, dry off a little bit onto the pink. Canvas off. I'm going to put some of this next to the red because pink is red and white, right? So I think it's kind of interesting. Oops. Oops, I didn't want to put too much, and I think did. Definitely. I'm quite forgetting with myself. And uh, essentially, I could keep going and going. And it's getting more crowded on my apron. And if I weren't doing it for a video, maybe I would have already stopped, if I'm keep really honest. Um, oh, I love this. I can't stop the same things I want to do. So let me just try a little bit of this somewhere. <laughs> I love this color. It's such a great color. It's very beautiful. I'm being generous and just letting it flow around my apron. Connect. You know what? We'll check out the comments later because obviously I don't know how to do this. And um, we will get back to you on that. We can 
Also, I can post on my Instagram, which is Claire underscore Desjardins underscore art. I can post, uh, I can address some of the issues or questions that you may have had about what we were doing here today. Um, I just want to make sure, let's see, I've got some notes here, my cheat sheet uh, to help me I just make sure I said everything I was supposed to say. Um, I would love to see the work that you have come up with. And if you are so inclined, please post your paintings, whatever you do on anthropology and use the hashtag art of anthropology. And that way we will see what you made. Um, you can also use hashtag Claire Desjardins, my name. And uh, that way I personally will see it as well. So I hope that I'm leaving you inspired. I hope that this is helpful and that maybe you'll be able to uh, get inspired to create something wonderful, something great for yourself. And um, I hope to see you again sometime soon. Check us out on, uh, on we'll see you on social media. Okay, bye.